How's everyone doing tonight? Just two weeks left. So, and then finals week. But, uh, <clears throat> I've got exams to pass back um, as soon as we finish up the lesson for tonight. Uh, I will also post my solutions so you can take a review. And again, uh, if you have any questions, we can discuss uh, matters. Some of it is uh, some of the great, you know, if it's not completely right, partial credit's more of an art than a science. So I may assign so many points, but anyway, we can have a discussion. But, uh, I did with one earlier today and uh, said I wasn't going to change it, and then I thought about it, and then I said, yeah, she was right. I probably should change it a little bit. So. Um, anyway, let's have, we'll have those discussions. So we just have three more sections to take a look at. You'll see the one tonight is really nothing new. I'm going to show you, you already know how to do it. Uh, then the next two, uh, for, this one's not too hard, it's just looking at sort of area to infinity, which sounds real complicated, but it's not too bad. But this uh, one we'll have on Thursday is very, helpful it's a business application for uh, producer surplus and consumer and, and producer surplus so that's when you produce too much or overproducing um, what it does so there, there's some calculus that's involved in there so might be a nice application for any of those of you that are doing supply chain uh, type things or supply demand uh, economics but not much we do have our we have a common final, so it's not at our regular time, but close, we're probably closer than anyone else. It's uh, Thursday, May 4th at 7, 10 p.m. It will not be in this room. It's, I think, down here somewhere in, in room 71. So it's still the same building, uh, but we'll work on locating where it is. Uh, it's not this one, yes? No, it'll just be our class. But all the classes are having their final, all the 210 classes have their final at the same time. So there's a couple that use this room. We drew the short straw. We don't get it, the other class does. So we'll be in our room, but we'll be by, we should just be by ourselves. Yeah. There's enough of us, we're almost 100, so um, we'll do that. But just, uh, I've got it here. And uh, so, you know, I know. Some of you want to get out of here, you want to get back home, you want a good flight on Wednesday, but we're, we're here till Thursday. Uh, if you really need to, I am giving a similar common final, actually in, no, it's not even in this room, for my 170 class on Tuesday night. So if you need that, one person's already contacted me, I said, yeah, I'll give you the, the 210 test Tuesday night. So we could do that. Um, if we need to. Okay. Uh, I'm working on, so you don't see these things that are, these are old reviews, so I'm going to review them to see if they're still app applicable. Uh, there is this review for final exam, spring 23. So I've downloaded that from the Math 210 website, so that is what the, the uh, coordinators have produced. I believe it is mostly the early reviews. It's just a collection of all the reviews put together. Uh, so, uh, but I'll take a closer look at it tomorrow, get, get with you by Thursday. Uh, so, you know, if you go back to the materials for test one and test two, those reviews should still be very, very helpful. Especially the one maybe, remember the one that you didn't do as well on, you know, the lowest scoring test, review that because if you do better, we can replace that score with how you do on that section on the final. So I'm always looking for improvement. Uh, as far as I know, all the homework should be extended till May 9th, because that's as far as it would let me go, because that's when it closes out. We're having the final May 4th, so it should be good enough to get you there. Uh, but don't come, well, I thought the assignments weren't due to them. Why are they on the test? So they will be on the test. You should get them done sooner, but you do have uh, at least until I have to post grades. I think usually with this, I, I may have to have, I'll check on that too. I believe I have to have 
grades posted by the Monday after finals week. Um, so even though they're due by the 9th, I've got to post grades before that time. So it's just mostly I pushed them out as far as I could so you could continue working until as long as you need. Uh, remember, homework, as long as you get 80%, you'll get 100% of the points. So if you've already got 80% of it, you don't have to work any, I mean, you could if for practice, but it's not going to get you any more points. But if you have 75, get that five more percent, you got 100%. So those kind of things. All right, any questions or concerns or doing okay? Good, good. Um, so where are we going? Okay. We're going to talk about this average. So what I want to show you is, um, so what is, we were doing Riemann sums, right? So we were talking about the integral as being what, geometrically? Got this, the area under the curve, good. So that's really what we've got. Remember, derivatives are the slope of the tangent line, integrals are the area under the curve. Uh, so it's area. So if I drew a rectangle and I told you that the area of this rectangle was 12 and I told you that the length of the rectangle, so tw not just 12, right? It's got to be square or units, 12 square inches, let's say. It's, uh, okay. And I told you that the length was 4 inches. Could you tell me how, what the width is? How would we do that? What's the mathematics? Close, but we don't, tw I'll say it again. L times four equals 12. L times four, okay, okay, we, yeah. We could do that, the, the, the length or width or whatever you wanna call it, times four equals 12. Good, and these are both inches, so that's why it's inches squared. And then how do we solve for L? Divide both sides by four. Okay, I was, I was shooting for 12 divided by four. I was, going to go, I was going too fast, so. But yes, the length is just simply, you take the area divided by its length or width, whatever we wanna call this, and that's exactly what we're doing tonight, okay? But what we're going to do tonight looks like this. We're going to take the integral of some function. I will just say x squared. And we're going to go over some length, right? Some, some, I don't know if you call it a width or a length, but some interval. Let's say we take x squared over, uh, actually let's go minus x squared plus 5. So that'll look nicer, right? That'll look something like this. And let's say we go from negative one to one. What does this integral give us? I should have my dx there. That integral gives us what? Area under the curve between negative one and one. So if we wanted to get the average of that area, what would that look like as a rectangle is really what we're doing, what would we do? Well, again, let's just make some easy numbers here. Let's say this area, we could figure it out. Should we figure it out? Let's figure it out. Uh, so we integrate x squared, or negative x squared, and what do we get? Over three, good, okay. That's the other thing on the test. There's a few of, uh, there, there was some difficulties with the, the u substitution because sometimes you were integrating when you should have been taking the derivative and, and the opposite. So just remember when you integrate, you're adding one. When you take the derivative, you're subtracting one. Uh, and then when we integrate five, what do we get? Five x. And then remember fundamental theorem of calculus, we go from negative one to one. We plug those in and that's gonna give us the area under that curve, okay? Um, and let's see. Let's, we first plug in the one, so let's say that's going to give negative one cubed over three plus 
5 times 3. minus negative 1, right? We plug in the bottom limit or bottom boundary. So we're going to put in this negative again. So a negative, let's do it this way, negative, negative 1 cubed over 3 plus 5 times negative 3. Uh, not negative 3. Where's that? Negative 1. Yeah. Thank you. What's that? Why do I do that? Because I see this little three down there. Thank you. See, that's why I, I, you show me in there, I said, well, yeah, I gave partial credit, but then I think, oh, I do that same thing. So, one. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so that's going to give us the area. So this is uh, negative one third plus 5. This is a negative, and a negative makes it a positive, but then this negative comes on and we get a negative, another negative one-third. And then 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, but this, one, this negative over here distributes so we get a plus 5. Right? 5 plus 5 is 10 minus two-thirds so the area under there is, is nine and nine and one third, nine point three three three. Let's just kind of go to decimals. So if we if we drew this, we could we and we could do this with our graphing calculator. It would show us the area under the curve from negative one to one of this particular function is nine point three three. And that would look something like this, right? It would it would be round because it's a parabola what would the air average area be? Well, the average area would be the rectangle that has the same area, the same width, but just the height that would produce that, right? What, it's, it's really the same problem we did with the rectangle, except now we've got a rectangle that has area of 9.33, because we just figured it out with the integral. What's its width? If those are the endpoints, how long is that? Two. It's two. It's one minus negative one. So that's how we just take the top one minus the bottom one. We'll get the length of our rectangle. So it's two. How are we going to get the height? 9.33 divided by two, right? That's what this side is. Just like up here, this was 12 divided by four, which we could say, okay, that's going to be three. 3 times 4 is 12. That makes sense. Here, it's going to be 9.33 divided by 2. And that is the average of the area. So it's just taking the area and say when you average something, you'd say, okay, what, what if this was like a swimming pool and it had the same depth all the way along? It would be 9.33 divided by 2. That's how deep it is instead of having that bubble shape. That's all, that's all this whole unit is. Uh, so I'm going to, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. More importantly, you take it and you're, what you're dividing by is the, the difference of the, two in, of the two edge. That's how we get the length. So it's not always going to be two. Sometimes it'll be three, sometimes it'll be one. Whatever it is, you get it from these two things. Okay, so we're going to see there's a nice little formula but I don't want you to think in terms of a formula. I want you to just think we're, we're getting area under a curve of a certain length. And what the average is, is what would the rectangle, what would be the height of the rectangle that has that same length and the same width. That's all it is. We'll show you some pictures. So I just want you to see is if you could do the first one, area of 12, length of 4, 12 divided by 4, that's the average. That's the average height is what we're getting out of. That's all it is. So. I'm going to kind of skip over this because this is, you know, how do we find averages? You add it all up and you divide by however many there are. And so that's really what we're doing is we're getting the area and we're dividing by the length. Okay. We're dividing by the length. So um, 
they give this example. So we have, we're, we're going for two hours and our speed is 50 miles per hour, uh, 50 to 60 miles per hour. So it's not, it's not set, but it averages. And that our speed ha follows sort of this function from zero to two, what's the average speed? right so if we integrate this this is a rate speed is a rate right so we could integrate that because a rate is a derivative so if we integrate this from 0 to 2 kind of like what we just did but with different numbers we're going to get the area under the curve and if we want the average of that, which in this case ends up being the average speed, we simply divide by 2 minus zero, uh, 0, not 1. And I know where I got the 2 is the top, sort of the top limit, 0 is the bottom limit. So again, we're dividing by 1 half. And what we would see if we graph this is uh, the parabola, parabola would produce a particular area. The average is going to be a rectangle. Uh, so I'll let them work through it. So yeah, they're going to integrate the velocity because the velocity is a derivative. We can, um, so they're going to integrate this part from 0 to 2. They do that, and then they plug in the 2 in. So they're going to plug in 2 for each of these t's, and then they're going to plug in 0 for each of the t's and subtract, right? Uh, and when you plug in 0, you get 0. So all you got to do is 2 times 50 is 100. 2 cubed times this is 20 over th plus 3. And so this is the, uh, again, so if you take the speed and you integrate it, what we've got now is distance traveled, right? Miles. So it took two hours to travel this distance. So the average speed, if you divide it by 2, 53.3 miles per hour. So that's where we could kind of use this. Uh, and again, when we're dividing, remember we're dividing by an x value. X has units. In this case, it has units of hours. So when we integrate it, our area was in miles. But when we divide by two hours, we're getting miles per hour. Okay. Just like when we've got that rectangle that was square inches, we divide by inches, we get just inches. Okay. So we're, we're actually getting different units. I'm just going to come back here. So basically all they did, well, let me go forward because then they're going to show you this is our, I mean, we just show you, this is the formula, right? This is what we've been doing. But I want you to understand it's where it comes from. So we've already been doing this part over here, right? This is just integration from A to B, two numbers. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. So integrate, put in the limits. Uh, so it's a good time to get some practice. The only new part is we're multiplying by this fraction or dividing by the length of that <laughs> interval, right? B minus A gives us that length. That's all we're doing. And it gives us an average. And if you just kind of keep track of the units, because when we integrate, we're getting some kind of an area. We're getting certain units. And then when we, we're dividing by the x value, which also has units, so we're getting some kind of an average rate again. So it does give us something new. Uh, and again, it gets us back. When we integrated, we just got miles, how much space was covered. But then when we divide by this, we're getting miles per hour again. Okay, But that's all you got to This is the only new part tonight is you put that part in there. But if you, if you just remember it as a formula, it's just which one goes first, and it's just kind of, you know, at least that's, that's how I, I remember doing this the first time. After a while, I said, it's really just simple. You're just dot dividing it. So um, let's look at a few examples. So again, if we want the average, and what, what they'll do for the average, they'll put a little bar over that. That comes from statistics. X bar is the mean or average. Uh, so you'll see this F bar is the average function value. Uh, and again, we can get it when F of X, F of X has to be a, a derivative. If we integrate it over 
the interval a to b, and then divide by that length of that interval, we'll have the average. Um, so they do a few examples here. You know, simple function of just x dx. Integrate it, you get x squared over 2. Uh, since we're going from 1 to 5, 5 minus 1 is 1 fourth, right? Is 5 minus 1 is 4. So we just kind of do the calculation, plug in 5, and then subtract when we plug in 1, and then multiply by 1 fourth, and what we now have is we've got the average of that function, the average function value. Okay. Let's take a look at a few graphs so you can kind of see. You don't always have to, but the difference is, is this pink function is f of x, and so what this whole setup is basically saying is we're going to integrate this function f of x, which is a line going up and you know, kind of a triangular shape, and we're going to go from 1 to 5. So that's, that's the pink. I guess I should put my dx. This is the pink. All the blue is, the blue is actually the same amount of area, but the blue, I guess I should have done it in pink. The blue is simply the same thing, going from 1 to 5, f of x dx. But we're going to take 5 minus 1, and we're going to divide it. And so the, that gives us a rectangle. It averages out the volume. And you can kind of see it looks like if I were to take this triangular part and stick it down in there, it would fit just perfect, and it would. Okay, so it's just kind of, it's not creating more area, it's just say, let's level it out. That's all we're doing. Okay, again, you have, we, we can't just do this because we want to. They have to ask the question, they have to want that average. They want the average, we can get it. If they don't ask for the average, it's the whole amount of area that we have. Okay. Okay, but oftentimes when, when you do it, the average, remember we're getting a rectangle, it's a, a lot of times easy. So it's, you know, from one to five is four. It's got a height of three. It's 12, it's 12. Okay, but even for a graph that is not as, you know, you can't necessarily see all the pieces, um, but you can see what we get when we get the average. You know, like this piece looks like we could cut it off and stick it in there and it would fit. And this little hump up here looks like we could cut it off and it would stick down in there and exactly it would. It would we're just fitting all the pieces into a rectangle when we take the average. The average we're getting is the height of that rectangle, the blue rectangle. That's all the average is. So it just says if I average it out, what, would I, what should I get? And again, there's applications, many applications for that. Anytime you kind of want to average things, maybe you have a production team and throughout the day there's ups and downs, but you see everybody's working hard, so we want to figure out the average and pay everybody that same average. You know, sometimes some people are going to be a little busier than others, but they're all there. They've all got the same skills. You know, maybe that makes sense. Maybe not. You know, if you're the one that's really busy, maybe you want to get paid a little extra. But whatever it is, you know, so whatever need we have to average things, sometimes we do. This, this process will do it. Um, and again, as, as you brought out, if you take that, basically this is just length times width, right? Actually, this is a height or whatever. And that gives us our area. So if we divide by it, we also get that height, right? That's all there is. I want to go through this one because in the homework, the homework, I'll bring it up a little bit. Most of it is, uh, it's got some uh, functions for you to integrate and, and find the average. And then you have to choose the graph. And what the graph is, it's a graph of the function, but then the, the average is represented just by a horizontal line. Make sense? So you just have to pick the right. So you have to do two things. You have to find the average, and then you have to pick the right graph. But once you have the right 
average, say it's three, you're looking for a graph that has a horizontal line at about y equals three. Because right? that's, remember, the average is the height of the rectangle that would have the same amount of area as the area under the curve. Okay. But there's a problem that inv involves uh, continuous compounded. So compounded continuously. Credit union pays 3% interest, compounded continuously. And at the end of the year, you get a bonus of 1% on the average balance in the account during the year. So average that you had. This is a place where sometimes they'll do that. You know, They'll average it out. So if you deposit 10,000 at the beginning of the year, how much interest and how much, how large a bonus will you get? So does anyone remember what's the formula for continuous compounding? Good. I just remember it as PERT, which used to be a, a hair shampoo. I don't know they still make that stuff. It's just when I was a, when I was in, when I was a bachelor or bachelor's degree, uh, it, they had that commercial all the time, PERT, PERT, PERT. So we just remembered the formula for continuous is PERT, P-E to the R-T. Okay, and that gives you your accumulated value. So this is a rate, right? This is a rate of growth. So the way we set this up is we're gonna, P is the principal, uh, E is just a, a number, right? The rate is what? 3%, so we put that in as 0 0.03, and T is our variable, T is time. If we integrate this, we will get the total value over the time period. At the end of the year, you get a bonus, so we're gonna leave the money in there for one year, so from zero to one, right? We put it in, one year later, we're gonna take it out. So that's that integral, but how do we get the average? which isn't really important because one minus zero is one, one over one is one. When you divide by one, nothing happens. So the integral itself is actually gonna be the average. So we're gonna see that. It gives us our average this way. But if we were doing it over two years, we would want to divide by two. The average value over two years, over five years, right? We would want to divide by five. So this is gonna give it to us. So how do we integrate e to the point zero three t? 10,000 comes along for the ride. E is its own integral, right? 0 0.03 T. The way I like to remember it, if I take the derivative of this, I'm gonna get an extra 0 0.03 coming down, right? Because of the chain rule. So I need to divide that out. If you just there's a, there's a shortcut rule doing e to the, they'll show you like e to the a. If you integrate this, it's always going to be 1 over a e to the a t. Okay. And we go from 0 to 1. And we kind of dropped off this because this is just going to give us 1, right? We would divide by one at the end, but nothing's gonna, so. But again, just remember, if this was two years, we would divide that. So this is actually gonna give us our average value. It's our average value. And let's, uh, let's calculate that. So, we plug in one, so I'm gonna get, well, what's 10,000 divided by 0 0.003? Let's do that. 10,000 divided by 0 0.03 is actually, wow, 333. 3, 3, 333,333.33. 3, 3. So I'm gonna put that on the outside, so that's 
10,000 divided by 0 0.03, we'll get e to the 0 0.03 times 1 minus e to the 0 0.03 times 0. 0 0.03 times 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1. And this just becomes e to the 0 0.03 minus 1. So let's see, what is e to the 0 0.03? e to the 0 0.03 is 1.03, so it's a little bit bigger than 1. Sheet 0, 03, 0, 04, 5. So I'll, I'll just round to 0 0.03. We'll see how we do. Minus 1. So it's now going to be 0 0.03, which is about the interest rate, right, times this number. which since we divided this by 0 0.03, means we should get right back to 10,000. Zero three, yeah. So the average <coughs> and you could find out again if we just use the formula without integrating it, we get that at the end of the year we would have ten thousand three hundred and four dollars and fifty five cents. So we earned three three hundred and four dollars and fifty five cents of interest. Uh, I think I may have, it might have been a good idea, so they're going to do this. I think they'll get slightly different number. They might, if they carry it out, uh, yeah. Let me see if I use the full decimal, because I have 1.0304. Yeah, so I get closer to what they got if I don't round. So it was a rounding error, just dropping it off. Um, and so this is your average value, but basically the same thing, 1% of that, you get about a $100 bonus. $10,000 average, you would have got a $100 bonus. Okay, but there's one very similar to this. So the, the moral of the story is when you do this E to the 0 0.03, uh, what I got when I plugged that in in my calculation is I got 1.03045 and when I rounded it to 1.03 I figure I could just drop this off I got exactly 10,000 uh, so I, I lost off about a hundred dollars uh, so that 04 gave more and actually, I got even more. I think they must have rounded it to the four. They probably rounded the four up to a five. When I, I went to 3045, and my number is I get 10,179. So there's, and that's one thing that happens in business is rounding errors, especially the larger the money, the larger the rounding errors can be. Okay. So, you know, use four or five. Um, but the homework has a very similar one. The thing is, is it doesn't give you this formula, but it does say it's continuously compounded. So I think it's the last one. You'll do the same thing, integrate it over the time period, and then again, divide by that time period. That'll give you your average value. And that's all there is. Let me just real quickly pull up, uh, just so you have a, a view of it, web assign.
to go to all assignments. Some things aren't because I, I messed up with the due date. So 14.3, view it. I just wanted to show you. Um, so they give you the function. They give you the interval, 0 to 2. You have to set it up as, a, as an integration, right? So I'll just do this real, we'll do sort of this first setup. So what they're wanting is to integrate from 0 to 2, x cubed minus x. So you're going to integrate it. They want the average, so you want to divide by 2 minus 0, or 1 half. And what you're going to get is the average. That average, remember, is the height. So when you go to choose the function, you just got to, if it was about 0.5, this would probably be the one. Notice the graphs are very similar. Um, so you're just looking for the difference. If it was a negative, it would be down here. If it was one, this, that's what this one would be. So you have to choose the graph as well. Okay. So, but just that height of that red line is the average. So once you get the average, you got to choose that too. And there's several of those type, and they'll give you the graphs. So it's kind of good. You kind of look at them. Um, and then the last two questions. So it's a pretty short assignment, five and six. Uh, this one just integrated um, over the time period that they're giving us. It looks like 0 to 20. And this last one, that's uh, compounded continuously. So that's like the last one we just did, the P e to the RT. We've got to use that formula, integrate it. And now you're getting 10%. Um, but it's over one year, so that's going from 0 to 1. Okay, Average is still 1 over 1. Not a big deal. So, but work through that, and then what you can start doing is reviewing back over where maybe you struggled a bit. Maybe you want to focus on the parts, you know, do a little review of what went well, too. Um, but start working on that. So we've got this week, we've got next week, and then we've got finals week. Our final's not scheduled till Thursday, so it's three Thursdays away. Um, but again, I'm going to look at improvement from previous exams. So do your best to get those up, and I can look at those. Any questions? OK, there's not that many of you, but we'll do this. If you remember your number from here, that makes it a little easier. When I change, I put the in the corner, so I think I have it easier and faster way. But if you want to come down, um, eight Ks first, or just give me your number and I'll I'll find you. Good question. Did you say all of the homeworks will be open on the night for review?
Second zone, I don't know, I'm pretty confused and like the tour moment and everything. But after looking to the intervals and having to see the process at like a different you know, from a different side and just you know click. Isn't that really normal make up the point? Cause I swear like I did it, like I don't know how to show it if it's on the calculator, like you just yeah. plug it in through your through your like I don't really know how to show like Yeah, you could do it but so you would it just yeah, like, so like, it just So there are some steps, but so that's what they want to see is that you, just can. you did have it set up properly, so that's why you got half of them. Yeah. Um, so it's like there is a useful way I can like make a full point of it, but like, like I just forgot to show one time you said, like, I know how to do it. Like, I did it for these other ones too. Tell you what, do it on the final. I'll get, I'll come back to this one as well. Okay. Okay, okay so thank you. Oh, please. Did you also pass out the first final by any chance? Because I never got that, but I know my friend got my second one. Or my right. second exam. Yeah, I passed them up the night before. So they're, it's in my off, it's in my desk. Um, if you'll send me an email, I'll bring it to the next class. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this one's not, it, it looked like you were keen Let me make it active. Uh, I forgot to do that. Um, it's doubtful. That's doubtful the last one. Yeah. Oops, publish. 
it's now it's published, it's not up there, but it's if you look for back to test three stuff at the very end, there's my solution guide. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How's it going? Very good. Awesome. Doing okay. I'm ready for a break. Uh, ready for summer. I didn't, I didn't really understand this one. Okay, so this is area between two curves. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you, this is one function, which is f of x equals five, yep. and this is the other one. So the one on top, you subtract, you subtract the bottom from the top. Mm -hmm. So that will give you five minus Zero to five people, you know, I get plus and plus here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're going from from zero to two with the shape. Uh, also, so I'm pretty confident that I got this correct, but I don't, I don't really don't know why I went down to B number one. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's I, I circled C. I don't know why I went down there. Right. Okay. So this Let's get the change in the Good? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so watch that when you're putting it in, but uh So, um, uh, the way to think through it is, is it's the shade, the shaded region, it's the area of the top function div minus the second one. So it's five minus this part. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, five minus one is four and you get a negative here. So that's going to be, it's going to be this one and it's going from zero to two. Okay. I knew it was going to be zero to two. Right. So it was really down to these two, but the main thing is is that the five is on top. This is if the five was on the bottom, um, and you subtracted five from it, then that would give you a negative four. But that, but that would give you that would give you the negative area. Okay. I get it. Then this one. Uh, what did I do wrong here? You, you left off the C, so you want to put in all this plus C equals 40, and then when you solve, you would end up being able to solve for C. Uh, otherwise, you've got all these numbers, um, and you've got this, but you, so really you got 26 equals 40, which is not true. So really, what you would have had oh. is 26 plus C equals 40, that would have indicated to subtract the 26, and then you would have seen that C was equal to 14. So you got the majority I, of the points. I divided 26. Right. And 40 because and you're, there four. was nothing else. That yeah, really so I needed to add the plus C, and then right. I would subtract. Oh, yeah. Okay. So for this 
question? I think I just This should give you eight. Two squared is four times four. This is four. Four plus four is eight. Mm -hmm. And then you bring the seven over, you get eight. And actually, the two is the part that gets subtracted, right? The B is on top. So there's a couple things here. So you would have got minus eight. When you subtract seven, you get minus 15. when you do quadratics, um, you know, x equals 2b and you get b squared, plus, um, then you can factor it into b minus 3, b plus 5. This gives you b equals negative 5, which doesn't work because negative 5 is less than yeah. 2. This gives you b equals 3, which works. Pleasure. Have a nice day. You too.